Welcome to Season 3 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big topics into small bites. I'm your host, Dr. Amy Newsel, and I'm joined by my dear friend, women's health and fertility expert, naturopathic physician, Kate Namas, to break down infertility, hormones, and the whole baby-making shebang. This week and next, let's talk about the eating and exercise habits that optimize fertility and also the ones that don't. This is a subject that Dr. Kate and I both feel very passionately about, and we both prefer similar diets. So, Kate, could you outline the basics for me? Yes. Um, We mentioned in Season 3, Episode 8, fix these things before trying to get pregnant, that lifestyle factors can affect the duration of time before achieving pregnancy and modifying these factors may enhance fertility. And these following recommendations are based upon data from observational studies. So here we go. Exercise and eat in a way that helps keep you in a healthy weight range. So a body mass index above or below the normal range is associated with an increased risk of anovulatory infertility, meaning you're not ovulating and therefore you're not getting pregnant. So with this bullet point, I recommend women to be within their normal BMI weight range, which is quite large of a range, but a little bit closer to the high end of normal is nice for fertility. And how I recommend exercising at a bare minimum is just a daily walk or three 10 minute walks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also recommend Michael Pollan's food rules, which is eat food, not too much, mostly plants, unless you're on the low end of your BMI weight range, and then it would take out the not too much part. (laughs) Yeah, too much, eat too much. (laughs) Exactly. And if clients ask me for a specific type of diet, because sometimes that's really helpful for certain people, I point them toward the Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. And then I'm prone to give more specifics, more details for conditions like iron deficiency, anemia, and PCOS. And what about the drinks? Coffee, alcohol, what are we talking? Yes, great question. I recommend limiting caffeine intake and avoiding all alcohol. So to go in a little more detail on that, women who are contemplating pregnancy ideally would limit their caffeine intake to no more than one or two cups of coffee per day for a total of of about 200 milligrams of caffeine. Um, Caffeine can affect sperm quality as well and has been linked to higher incidences of genetic differences in sperm, as well as long, a longer time to pregnancy. So reduce fertility. <laughs> it's not just us. Exactly. And I also recommend avoiding all alcohol, especially because my clients are usually struggling with fertility. Um, moderate and heavy drinkers tend to take longer to achieve pregnancy, which is not something someone wants when they're actively trying to conceive and are at a higher risk of undergoing an infertility evaluation. Mm -hmm. So again, I just suggest avoiding all alcohol and limiting caffeine intake. That's great. Okay, so we're talking about basically keeping your BMI within healthy parameters if you can. So within what's considered normal and for fertility, trending towards the higher end of normal, which means adding maybe a little weight to your frame is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Um, eating real food, right? Real food, not too much of it. And if we're looking for a specific diet, look to Mediterranean, decrease caffeine, eliminate alcohol. Perfect summary. Yes. Perfect. So when I'm thinking of this, one thing that I would like to add with the eat food, not too much, lots of it plants. So lots of fruits and veggies is really important. If you aim for five or more half cup servings, uh, very few people actually get that, by the way, but if you aim for five or more half cup servings of fruits and veggies daily, this is really where you're getting a lot of those micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals and small things that help to build a healthy baby. Um, So it's really important to focus on this. One study found that, quote unquote, women with the highest adherence to a Mediterranean style diet characterized by higher intakes of vegetables, fruit, fish, poultry, low fat dairy, and olive oil had 0.56 times the odds of seeking medical help for difficulty getting pregnant, unquote. So what that means 
And that, by the way, was a quote from uh, Dietary Patterns and Difficulty Conceiving, a nested case control study in the Journal of Fertility and Sterility. So 0.56% chance of getting intervention basically for fertility means they're half as likely to get a fertility diagnosis, meaning they're having fertility trouble half the time of women who don't eat a diet like that. That's really compelling, actually. That's very significant. The other thing I'd like to add is that we're looking to decrease refined carbs. So these are your sugary starches. Um, they have a very high glycemic index. And glycemic index is a measure of how quickly a food that you eat converts to blood sugar. So the higher it is, the quicker that happens and the more dangerous that food is for blood sugar stability. For the most part, these foods give you lots of calories, but not really a lot of nutritional value. So to quote from a study published in Current Medicinal Chemistry, several reports are in favor of an increased consumption of either proteins or low glycemic index carbohydrates to improve ovulatory disorders and female fertility. So basically, we just want foods that will digest more slowly and won't spike and drop that blood sugar. Yeah, I, I love both of those studies. Thanks for sharing that. So again, lots of fruits and vegetables. Focus on high fiber, non-starchy vegetables, especially for PCOS, which we've talked about in other episodes, and decrease refined carbs by minimizing added sugars and refined processed grains. Perfect. So what other little, oh, sorry for interrupting. What other little details do you have? Well, you know, one thing that I find really useful is eliminating the sugary drinks. You know, it's not really a big diet guideline, but it goes with the glycemic index thing. They're empty calories or they boost your appetite without any nutritional benefit. So basically, this is the highest possible glycemic index foods. Just take those off the list for now. Fiber, lots of fiber. So fiber has beneficial effects for balancing hormones, grabbing and eliminating toxins, balancing blood sugars, right? So it evens out that glycemic index and generally keeps people healthy for both men and women. So that can really help during fertility. Also, we wanna make sure you're getting high quality fats and fats probably in higher quantities than you're used to eating, right? So building a baby takes lots and lots of fats because we're building all those healthy cell membranes, right? So think of good Mediterranean diet fats like olive oil, small fatty fish like anchovies, sardines, or herring. Um, larger fish are, good for fats, but they may bioaccumulate mercury, which we don't want so much of when we're trying for fertility. The Mediterranean diet, again, is the most well-researched benchmark for a diet high in beneficial fats. Lean proteins, this can be animal or vegetable sources, lean meat, poultry, dairy, eggs, uh, beans, nuts, and seeds, and also pulses like lentils, right? And then lots of water right? We harp on about hydration all the time. And I know everybody is sick to death of hearing it, but <laughs> hydration matters for everything, including fertility. Don't skimp on this part. And if you feel like you drink water, but it goes straight through at a pinch of like a Himalayan salt or a good unrefined sea salt to help push some of that water into your cells, just not too much because small doses help you hydrate, but large doses actually increase your blood pressure and dehydrate. So good point. Mm -hmm. And again, what we're talking about here are the basics. Conditions like diabetes or PCOS may cause you to limit carbohydrates even further. Iron deficiency anemia may have you focusing more on food sources of iron like red meat or beets, but this is a really highly customizable starting place. Agreed. Yeah. Um, what can you tell our listeners about some tips on MTHFR fertility and nutrition in addition or differing from what we just talked about? Great question. So MTHFR is definitely a special situation. We still want these good basic building blocks of a healthy fertility diet, but a higher dose of omega-3 fatty acids, which we talked about a lot in season one, episodes 42 and 43, which really deep dive into that synergy between the omega-3s and the Bs. Um, but it's also really important to stay away from foods fortified with synthetic folic acid and to make sure that you're getting an optimal dose of an MTR, MTHFR safe folate to prevent neural tube defects and midline abnormalities. This could be 5-L-methyl tetrahydrofolate. It could be folinic acid in combination with natural folate from food sources. 
And lastly, because us folks with MTHFR also have a slightly higher risk of gestational diabetes, the low glycemic index part of this is especially important to focus on. Is this, I love those tips, is this equally as important preconception, first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, or is there a peak point where these dietary recommendations are most important? I mean, as with everything else, as a really great question, I would say as with everything else, the preconception phase, which is often overlooked, is actually probably the most important phase. Agreed. Yeah. Um, glycemic index, we want to carry that through the whole pregnancy because gestational diabetes is a real risk. Um, but preconception is actually the most important part in terms of preventing neural tube defects and midline abnormalities. So if you can prepare for a pregnancy, please God do so. Yes. Well, Dr. Kate, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us, us today. And thanks to everybody listening and sharing your valuable time with us in this way. Thank you so much for listening today and sharing your time with us. If you like this show, please follow and maybe even leave a review. Or like and subscribe if you happen to be watching on YouTube. Visit namesnd.com or to healthwiththat.com for more information about Drs. Kate and me, Dr. Amy. 